So this is price my verse. <laughs> okay, so price movers. Um, so this is stocks that move a lot, you know. Um, but this, these are tricky because even though a stock moves a lot, the most important thing, and let me show you this on the earnings analysis that we pulled up. The most important thing um, is, is it moving outside of what the market makers, these expected moves are? Um, so you just have to be careful because, you know, if a stock moves a lot, you know, maybe that's expected. Um, so, <clears throat> so obviously you have to go through and test it, but, um, you know, this one moves a lot, but, you know, it could be borderline on some of these, um, as far as, you know, that mover trade. And the mover trade is quite simply volatility rise. Um, you're doing that same thing. So you're looking a few, you know, a week to a week before getting in, and then you're holding it through the earnings announcement. So obviously, um, you know, you're looking for that 25%, but this trade will have more risk if you can't get that 25% before the earnings announcement. So if you're holding it through that earnings announcement, it's going to be, um, you know, your risk is going to go up a lot. Um, so <clears throat> once that earnings comes out, then, you know, as I showed initially, uh, that volatility crush is going to really take hold. It's like right afterwards and you're, option prices all drop significantly. So the stock has to move a lot um, for you to make up that difference of holding it through, you know, <clears throat> um, through the earnings here. So this one, just be careful. <laughs> I don't, there's not a lot of candidates. Um, and the reason why, you know, typically, you know, as Sean will show you in these volatility crush, type trades and, you know, non-movers, um, you're taking the opposite bet of this, you know, of these people doing straddles and strangles. Like you're taking the opposite because it's pretty much a, almost a sucker bet to do um, like, oh, I think it's going to move a lot. Um, so I'm going to buy a straddle, you know, um, but the market makers know that and they, you know, increase the options premium. So you're paying a lot for them and they have a pretty good estimate of where things are going uh, as far as the earnings move. So, you know, the next day, you know, it moved a lot like you thought, but you know what, the market makers knew that too, so uh, you lost money on the trade. Um, so these are very difficult trades. Um, I don't do any of these price movers. If anything, I just do the um, volatility rise, but I think it's worth explaining you know, the, uh, the difference between the two and the risks involved with that. Yeah, so, um, so just like the volatility rise, you know, you're gonna get, uh, you know, you're gonna have a cushion on the straddle or strangle going in there. You know, ideally you'll get out before the earnings announcement. Um, you know, if you can hit that 25%, if not, you hold it through and, um, you know, hopefully it'll move outside of the expected move to make money on that trade. So, um, so obviously more risk than the volatility rise because you're holding it through the earnings. We have the same setup for that straddle um, and for that uh, strangle, you know, standard deviation, 25, 50 there. So same as the, the previous setup, um, where the search criteria, we're just looking for ones that move at least 3%, seven out of 10. And that's so we can you know, find a lot of candidates or try and find a lot that you know, we can screen to see if they do well. So we had a, a couple examples here. So Joy uh, Incorporated, uh, symbol YY. You know, has good volatility rise going in there, 10 days. 
and then the earnings move you can see is pretty big um, typically but not always so um, so hopefully you know with these trades you'll get out prior to the earnings uh, if not then you know if you get one of these moves uh, then you know it'll be a winner but you know tested well at 20 days um, actually that's it's the previous Thursday that, that's incorrect sorry it's uh so we enter the previous Thursday prior to earnings and this is uh, the strangle so you can see um, you know some of these you're holding through the earnings um, and some of them like this one three five three nine you're getting out prior to um, so you know you're kind of looking at volatility rise and if you know, these candidates, you know, if you don't get it beforehand, then these typically do well. So, you know, minimum downside on this trade, at least. Um, and really good profit factor, you know, 90% win rate. Not a lot of these candidates. So <laughs> just so you know, there's a lot more uh, the vol rise than these. So Zillow is another one you can see really good. Um, IV at the money rise um, prior to earnings. Pretty good, strong moves here. Um, and these are all in that earnings analysis that you can pull up. But you can see on average, it's either dropping 10 or going up 11. So that's pretty good moves. Uh, same thing previous Thursday, and this is the strangle. So pretty good overall profits here. Uh, and it looks like a lot of these are holding through the earnings. So not this one. So <clears throat> same thing, strong uh, profit factor win percentage. And you know we have 17 over 80 and three over 90. So not a ton for these. I'd just be, you know, just be careful more, I'd be a little more leery of these. Uh, you know, if I have a profit going in before the earnings announcement, you know, I was doing this trade, one of these trades, and you know, I'd like a 15% profit going into earnings. I think I would get out and not hold it through. Hold, you know, I wouldn't hold it through the earnings <coughs> um, if I if I had a decent profit prior to because there's just so much risk holding it through that earnings. You get a flat move, and you know this trade will get you know hurt pretty bad. So, but you know the the good thing about um, you know how we're buying these. Uh, these options, which are 60 days out, you're not going to get the same kind of crush where, you, you know, if you had a weekly that would, you know, if you had earnings on Thursday and you had a weekly that was expiring the next day, you know, that volatility crush is going to be significantly more um, than one that's still got two months to go. Um, so you're helping minimize that IV crush on these, you know, you're not going to get the IV build <coughs> the same as that weekly would. So you're, you're, you're um, so you're dropping your, your risk a lot by moving them out. Um, you know, as you move them closer and closer, you know, your risk goes up, you know, they'll be cheaper, but your risk is going to go up a lot um, just because, uh, <coughs> you know, if it's expiring that Friday, you know, could, you could lose all everything. Whereas, you know, that 60 day, there's no way it's going to go to zero because um, you still have two months left um, where it can move anywhere. Okay. And we got through all that. Holidays. Okay. So in the earnings plan here, uh, mover. So I did the same thing that I did for volatility rise. I did strangles, straddles, and then you know, I put all the best trades all the way to the right. So here's where they are. So the acronyms on these are a little different. So it's telling you, okay, you know, Align's earnings are going to be on like Wednesday or Thursday. So you'd buy the previous week's Monday. So that's what this previous week, Friday, earnings week, Wednesday, earnings week, you know, earnings day. So you'd buy <coughs> this straddle uh, right before the earnings announcement. 
Um, so that's all the, the testing we did for these. So any questions on those? No one? I see the chat's active, but yeah, you can put them in the Q&A if you do have questions, so. Okay. Um, all right, well, that's the first four. Uh, those are all the before earnings, and one, I guess, through it. Um, Sean's gonna be covering the next ones.